Hello and welcome to Bloomberg Quint at a time when there has been a lot of debate as far as overhaul or halt of the judicial appointments is concerned. We have a former judge from the Supreme Court of India, Justice uh, Karju. Hello, sir. Welcome. Uh, my first question will be that on several accounts, the present Chief Justice of India, Justice Thakur, has raised the issue of bringing the judicial appointments to a halt. He even cried at an event. Then yesterday, right after the Independence Day speech, he said that at this point of time, Modi, Narendra Modi, Prime Minister, should have said something about judicial appointments. Do you agree with him here? See, there can be no disagreement that the vacancy should be filled in. The, but the way Justice Thakur has been uh, going about it was most improper. Just consider, did Justice Thakur expect the Prime Minister to speak at the Red Fort about the differences between the judiciary and the government, about the memorandum of procedure, etc. See, this is nonsense. What Thakur talks is nonsense. And immediately after coming from um, the um, Red Fort function, Justice Thakur came to the Supreme Court and he lashed out at the Prime Minister. Was this proper? And then he uh, said in the presence of uh, the Union Law Minister, Mr. Ravi Shankar Prashad, who was also, I believe, in the Supreme Court at that time. Yet, uh, some, in Hindi, he said, Gaunt, Hamari bhi kya mazboot hai, or something like that. Pakki, Hamari bhi Gaunt pakki hai, kachi nahi hai. Mr. Ravi Shankar Prashad, ye mat samajhiye, aap hi ki Gaunt pakki hai. Yeah, what kind of language is this? Is this the language befitting a Chief Justice of India? Just Thakur not know how to talk and openly he is speaking like this. You know, there may be differences between the government and the judiciary about appointments of judges. But these differences are not to be aired openly. They are to be sorted out by sitting on the room, Chief Justice of India and maybe some of his senior colleagues, union law minister and other government representatives and coolly discussing the matter and then sorting it out. Not by openly flexing one's muscles and adopting a confrontationist posture. What kind of behavior is, is this of Dr. Justice Thakur? He, he must know how to um, respond to a particular situation but and he does not talk about the massive corruption in the judiciary. Hmm. You've spoken about this in the blog, so sir. Could you elaborate? Yes. Uh -huh. The former union law minister, Mr. Shanti Bhushan, who is a very senior lawyer of the Supreme Court, filed an affidavit uh, seven, eight years ago that um, half of the previous chief justices of India were definitely corrupt and two, mo two more were possibly corrupt. Now, this is, mind you, Chief Justice of India. Then, uh, the uh, one former Chief Justice of India, Justice Bharucha, said, I think in 2000, that 20% of the High Court judges are corrupt. Since 2000, till now, perhaps that percentage has doubled. Mm -hmm. And so far, subordinate judiciary is concerned, things are far worse. Why doesn't Justice Thakur talk about that and try to remove that corruption in judiciary? And then cases take... 15, 20, 25 years to decide in appeal, second appeal. Litigants are weeping, they are given date after date, nothing is done. Why doesn't Justice Thakur address that also? All that he forgets. And then he says that I will withdraw um, judicial functions from some High Court judges who were recommended to be transferred. How can Chief Justice of India withdraw judicial functions from a High Court judge? That can only be done by the Chief Justice of the High Court because Chief Justice of High Court allots work and he can withdraw work. Not Chief Justice of India. Then Justice Thakur, they, you know, he is in this habit of sermonizing. He said judges should work during summer vacations to clear the backlog. He uh, got a circular issued that no Delhi uh, judicial officer will go abroad even if he is on leave. Whereas Justice Thakur himself twice went abroad during summer vacations. So giving lectures to others but not applying the rule to himself. Par Obdesh Kushal Bahutere as it is said in Hindi. So Justice Thakur, you know, 
I am sorry to say he lacks the judicial discipline, the self-restraint which a chief justice of India should have. Actually, the coming to the NJAC debate, though the court has struck it down, the matter is still going back and forth. The issue of even something as basic as memorandum of procedure, which has been defined in the judgment, is now being resented by the Collegium Chief Justices saying, no, the registrar will form the contours of the MOP. Law Minister saying, no, we will form it. So, how do you see this progressing? Again, I said this has to be sorted out by a consensus between the executive and the judiciary. You cannot totally remove the executive from the matter of appointments of judges. You may keep on giving any number of judgments like in the judges, second and third judges case which I believe are totally illegal judgments because there is no mention of any collegium system in article 124. The Supreme Court did something totally illegal that is substituting a provision in the constitution by another provision of its own choice by, and that too by judicial verdict. The constitution can be amended by the parliament by two-third majority under article 368, not by the judiciary, but they have amended it. The you know, Supreme Court thinks it is a, an emperor and they can do anything they like, amend the constitution, violate the law. What is this kind of behavior? In fact, the higher you go, the more self-restraint there must be because there is nobody above you to correct your errors. But the Supreme Court judges, many of the Supreme Court judges don't seem to realize this. They have no self-restraint, passing all kinds of orders, creating law, like in the BCCI case. Mm -hmm. Justice Thakur and Justice Kalibullah practically created law. Whereas there are 30, 40 judgments which I have quoted in my report to the BCCI which you can see on the website bcci.tv. The judges cannot legislate. Those were binding precedents. Some of them were judgments of five judges, three judges, and Justice Thakur's bench was of two judges. He has just chosen to ignore all that. You know, there's a doctrine of precedents, which is part of the law of this country. Binding judgments have to be followed. You can't ignore them, but Justice Thakur has shown total lack of judicial discipline by ignoring a binding precedent, what kind of behavior is this on Justice Thakur? It's another bone of contention in the MOP right now is that who will have the final say? Whether the Chief Justice will have the final say as far as rejection of nomination of certain judges is concerned or the government will have a final say? What would you uh, have to say? I am, uh, I am saying that this also has to be sorted out by consensus. You can't force the government because remember one thing, an appointment of a Supreme Court judge or High Court judge is made under the signature of President of India, not under the signature of Chief Justice of India. Supreme Court may recommend the matter, but the government can sit on it. You can't force the government. You, these things are sorted out by consensus, not by issuing dictates or farmans. At this high level, you have to work by consensus. Justice Thakur doesn't seem to realize uh, all this, uh, what can be done. Right, sir. Thank you so much for talking to us. That was Justice Karju highlighting that both parties need to sit together and resolve the issue rather than bringing it out in the open because it's about appointment of judges where the final stamp is definitely with the executive and the judges only recommend. Keep watching Bloomberg Quint.